and welcome to our special two-hour review of the second test, Australia taking on India in Calcutta. In the first test, Australia won in under three days by ten wickets, a devastating result, and that took Australia's tally to 16 consecutive test wins. In Mumbai, the hometown of Sachin Tendulkar, Tendulkar, he was the only starring light for the Indians. Here in Calcutta, Tendulkar has yet to make a test hundred, his highest score being 79 against Australia on the last tour of 1998. Well, Eden Gardens is the hometown and the home ground of current Indian captain Saurav Ganguly and one wonders whether he can overcome the pressures and the criticisms that have been levelled at him over the past few days. In Mumbai, Steve Waugh won the toss. He sent India in with good results and one wonders whether he will have the same opportunity here in Calcutta. Let's go to the middle and Ian Chappell is with Ganguly and the Australian captain Steve Waugh. Tell me, you ready? I'm ready. Okie doke. Head take it. Uh, back. Thanks. Uh, looks pretty good pitch. Yeah, it looks a real good pitch. You know, it's very hard to pick the side for us, but uh, we're going to have a bat first and see a few runs and put pressure on the Indian batsman. And uh, you've made the one change, uh, Casper coming into the side. What was the reasoning there? Yeah, look, it was it was a very hard decision to make. Uh, we feel that uh, Michael, you know, he's bowling well at the moment, gets a bit of extra bounce, does reverse swing the ball well and can bowl for you all day, but tough, tough choice when uh, Colin Miller and, and Damian Fleming Two had to miss out, unfortunately. Mm. The series win is so close now. What did you talk about in preparation? Just make sure we're doing the same things we've been doing, not, not to look at the end result, and make sure the process is right and go out and enjoy the, uh, enjoy the game. It's a great stadium, so for all of us, it's a, it's a tremendous opportunity. Good luck, then. Yeah, thanks. So, Rav, uh, you know a bit about this pitch. What is its uh, traits? Yeah, it's going to do a bit in the first two hours. It's always been the case. Yeah. The last two test matches, the visitors were 29 for 6 and Australia 55 mm -hmm. at lunch. So it's going to do a bit in the morning. It's going to be a good wicket overall. Mm -hmm. And an important test match for you and for India. Uh, does it help playing on your home ground? It's, it's fantastic playing at Ian Gunn's. The atmosphere will be electrifying. You'll have about 100,000 people watching today. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a good day of career. Mm -hmm. And you've been forced to make a few changes. Uh, got a few uh, young players in? Yeah, we've got some injuries. Srinath's got a broken finger. Ajit is not too well, so we've got some young guys in. But Venkatesh Prasad is a seasoned campaigner. He's done well on this crown, so I'll be looking after him. And Raju is back, so we've got some experience in youth. And uh, what did you talk about the improvements needed to win this test? Well, we have to put some runs on the board. We can't win a test match, which is 170. Steve had put us in in Bombay, which I thought was good for us, but we didn't get enough runs on the board. But we had them at 99 to 5, but Naram played an outstanding knock. So it was just probably a wicket away from a, from a different ball game. So we look at it that way and probably going to play a hard cricket. Yeah. Good luck then. Thanks. Sir. Well, Steve Waugh has uh, won the toss and on this occasion he's decided that Australia will bat first. So Steve Waugh has made it two from two. India, they made some changes, some forced. Raju, Zahir Khan and Prasad came into the side and they were forced changes through injury and illness for the Indians. Tendulkar, will he bat at four? There is some speculation that he may force himself up the order and bat at number three. For Australia, just the one change, Michael Kasperich came into the side to replace Damien Fleming. And given the situation of the lead-up game, some players in good form. Mark Wall got 100, so did Steve Waugh, and Ricky Ponting, 200s in the previous match in Delhi in the lead-up game against the Board 11. So it's going to be Australia to bat first, and what a match it should be. Everything poised for Australia to win this series and go 17 consecutive test victories, or can. India come back and drag themselves back into this series. Last time Australia was here, Mark Taylor won the toss and Australia was bowled out in the first day for 233 and in fact lost the match by an innings and 219 runs and in fact lost the series because of that match. Well, let's go to the first ball now of this second test match. Australia taking on India. It is Michael Slater facing Zahir Khan. It's good to see Zahir Khan has got the new ball first up. Shows a bit of confidence in there. Sort of Ganguly in the young fast bowler. And when you sort of lose a senior player like Srinath to injury, very often it happens that it becomes a great opportunity for a young man. Just hope Zahir Khan becomes a sensational find that India really needs in this series. Well, he'll be bowling to Michael Slater. Slater won't have fond memories of his last game at this ground. Out for a duck in the first over. Zahir Khan to Michael Slater. Australia were in early trouble in that test match here in 98. Srinath was the man who did the damage, taking two wickets in his first over. 
got Slater and then he got uh, Greg Blewett and India went on to win that test match they really uh, they need to win this one Peter Willey is the umpire at the bowler's end and uh, he's had a chat to uh, Zahir about that first delivery big shout there's a bit of uh, nerves around at both ends at the moment the bowler and the batsman a little on edge just a little excited young fast bowler a bit too high for the appeal I just turned up uh, a few days back to play a local game in Mumbai for my company to my misfortune I saw Zahir Khan playing the match against me and on a very unhelpful pitch it was good to see the young man working hard bought a lot of overs excellent temperament that's his strength he's just down a bit on uh, speed at the moment just 131 k's as I say a little bit of nerves at uh, at each end at the moment and not surprising with all the noise that's going on out there And to no one's surprise, still early in the test match, the first over, the stadium nearly filled to capacity. And it's a big stadium you're talking about. Always special, Eden Gardens. I think Matthew Hayden now feels as though he's uh, a part of this Australian side, that he's a permanent member. And... Uh, I think that'll do wonders for him. He's very strong of mind, and that's what's got him back into the team. That uh, success in the first test will be very helpful. Three slips in a gully for Prasad, who bowls well to left-handers. He's troubled Saeed Anwar uh, quite a bit in matches against Pakistan. And we heard the captain, the Indian captain, talk about Venkatesh Prasad at the toss. He said he's one bowler who is exploit the, the conditions well here in Eden Garden and it's the pitch and the conditions that help bowlers like Venkatesh Prasad the bowler that comes to my mind instantly is Roger Binney who had such great success elsewhere but Eden Gardens Hayden off the mark that uh, outfield will be very quick it's lush but underneath it surfaces very hard so it'll be a quick outfield Good bowling, right on line, and that's where you've got to be for Michael Slater. Roundabout off stump, perhaps even a touch outside off stump, and swinging back in. Well, he burst onto the international scene, Zahir Khan in Nairobi in that ICC knockout tournament. And after he played the first match, I remember Pakistan was playing the next day, and Wasim Akram came up to me excitedly and said, you've got this new young boy, he's pretty good. And one of the things that appealed to Wasim Akram about Zahir Khan was that he was able to bowl quick, pitching the ball up he's short on this occasion and Michael Slater has dealt with it not quite off the middle of the bat but that outfield is quick that's a good shot he's very good through the offside you tend to forget that uh, he's quite strong through the onside as well. This outfield is not fast, it's lightning quick. Another chase for the Indian captain. Trying to find some swing, but the ball was really wobbling in the air. And when that happens, you don't get too much movement in the air. No chance for the Indian captain. Pitch right up. And the second boundary for Matthew Hayden. I think it's fallen short of the keeper. That's the right spot to be bowling, but the ball didn't carry. Yeah, when you had that first look, it looked like it didn't carry. That's why he's such a dangerous bowler to left-hander. Ball seems away. Good line. And he is just falling short of Nayan Mongia. And Katish Prasad stayed there for a while, maybe have thought that the keeper could have dived forward easier said than done but really 
went down on Mongia. He's done well, the keeper. Well, that's going to be four fours now. So Australia have made a good start. Oh, great shot. Beautifully played down the ground. Lovely straight drive. This is an aspect of the Australian game that's to be admired. They are aggressive. Yes, he's the informed player, Matt Hayden. He would be confident after that 100 in Mumbai, and this is a good shot. He's allowed the ball to come onto the bat, and he looks a good player when he's punching it down the ground. Tall man. Good stride forward. Good balance, too, when he played it. Well, nicely played again, that one uh, a bit too straight, boy what a shot, he's whipped it away off his legs for four, 24 for none. Oh, in the air, and no ball called, no ball called, India, what are you doing? What are you doing? Michael Slater. Michael Slater doesn't know. He doesn't know he's walking. Well, it's Christmas time, Michael Slater. You've had two Christmas presents in the space of four days. Yes, he was walking back to the pavilion. But one thing for sure, Tony, that change ball has done something. Bounce and movement of the scene. The pitch is the same. And clearly overstepping. So Empire Bansal has got it right. Slater playing away from the body, but it doesn't matter now. The catch was taken, and watch him, he's walking. Good catch by VVS Laxman. Slater at this stage is, uh, and there's Hayden saying to him, hey, come back, come back. There we go again, you've got another chance. Oh, that's a lovely feeling, I tell you, as a batsman. Not a good one when you're the bowler. 31 for none. Lovely shot, and this is a lightning fast outfield. Hayden just land on that ball, and it's gone to the rope really quickly. And scores are going to be high in this match, you would suggest. Uh, slapped it through the offside. He's had a life off the no ball, Michael Slater, and it, this just may be his day, maybe his sort of pitch. And when you pick up boundaries like Michael Slater does, this could be a dangerous period for the Indians. And no need to even walk for that one. That is a lovely off drive. He has such a wonderful front foot stretch to the, the opening bowlers and the medium paces, Michael Slater, when he's in form. And this may indicate that he's just finding himself some of that elusive form. I tell you what, Hooksy, he could be a threat to the Indian bowlers, Michael Slater. Because once he gets going, he really scores his runs quickly. And yes and no, chance to run out of his hits and picked up and missed. Well, Michael Slater said yes, then he said no. Matthew Hayden says, well, I expect it from you, Michael. It's just taken 16 overs today and not 16 balls. And that's another one that's crunched through mid-off. Just showing you how good this pitch is on the first morning. Nowhere near a half volley. Matthew Hayden in good form. He brings up the Australian 50 with the... 11th boundary and you don't bowl short when you bowl 40 miles an hour that is one of Michael Slater's great strengths and that is a bad delivery from a man that's swinging the ball he's dragging Slater forward and suddenly he drives the ball a short one that's absolutely amazing there's no concentration whatsoever from Saurav Ganguly and this is what happens when a batsman is bowling and he's into his fourth over you can't concentrate for too long but what the Indian captain has got to tell himself is that he keeps bowling up in that corridor where the batsman keeps thinking whether to play or to leave them nicely played beautiful shot through mid wicket again he's hit three of those 
and none of them uh, more sweetly timed than that so Hayden really uh, cashing in on anything that's uh, just too straight but uh, boy isn't he timing him well no. oh, there's that drive and um, straight to short extra cover uh, again they're hoping that he'll drive it in the air the man at short extra cover coming into play but uh, and that's Sachin Tendulka feeling there but he managed to keep it on the ground, just checking his drive on that occasion. And this is a man in a hurry, isn't he, more often than not. Uh, Michael Slater is uh, very, very aggressive. Not uh, too many dead bat shots. He tends to uh, want to go after it. Oh, and uh, indulging in a little bit of um, a discussion there with... <laughs> With Rahul, not with Rahul, Ravid, with Ganguly, the captain. Yes, I think that uh, it may well have been Ganguly uh, saying a little bit to him first, suggesting that he might have been lucky. And Slater uh, having a go at that one, smashing it away down over the top. This gives you some idea of the attitude uh, of this Australian side. He's hit that one. He's flicked that one way over the top of uh, the boundary down at mid-wicket for six. What a way to finish uh, this little spell. Very nonchalantly done. Last ball before lunch. What does Slater do? Smacks him over mid-wicket for six. What a way to go to lunch. What an example for the opposition bowlers. Michael Slater going out with a six. But it could have been also different. Michael Slater caught off a sort of Ganguly no ball when he was just 13. And Matthew Hayden, a really close call with a run out attempt by Sachin Tenduka. If Tenduka had hit the stumps, Australia would have been two for 48. But it wasn't to be. And again, the Indian fielding let them down. Well, after the break, Matthew Hayden took about the bowling. but uh, was it uppishly played a desperate lunge I think it was probably straight into the ground and he was trying to stop it but uh, this pitch is hard he hit the ball into the ground and uh, it went flying down the ground for four again beautiful timing by Hayden okay. this is where uh, with such a rich, rich history in spinners one would have thought that um, between guys like uh, Prasanna Chandra Bishan Betty then Kat Raghavan just the ones that I played against you would have thought that they could impose upon this kid. Oh, and then he smashed him away. You see, he's got to, he's really going to take him to the cleaners. And that brings up uh, the half century for Matthew Hayden in the most incredibly aggressive style. The ball bowled from over the wicket, actually uh, spinning across him. And, uh, well, the boxing kangaroo, the Australian flag. You name it, uh, they're fluttering out there. Ten fours, that's 40 of his runs in boundaries. Yeah. Oh, that's out, caught behind. Yes, got him. Yes, he's got him. Slater's not going. He's going to have to go. He's going to have to go. Well, Zahir Khan has done it. That's a good line. Slater pushing outside off stump. Very, very big edge through to the keeper. Listen to the roar. Eden Gardens has come alive. Good line to start with Zahir Khan angling the ball outside the off stump. That was very close to both bat and pad. But a clear nick, the reaction would suggest. It's a wicket for a good line bowl by the seamer. 103 for one. Michael Slater has had an interesting tour. Caught and given not out in the first test. And then he is now under a one-match suspended sentence following his altercation with umpire and fieldsman during the first test in Mumbai. In Calcutta, caught off a no ball when he was 13 and then denied a half century by a decision that clearly went off the pad. He thought about giving the umpire a look and then he thought about shaking his head and then he decided to walk from the ground. But if you thought that that wicket was going to lift the Indians, well, it was substandard fielding and substandard bowling that Langer and Hayden took toll of. Oh, he's gone down the wicket. That's a very bold shot. Well, it looks as if they've taken the view that there's no way they're going to let him bowl. What a shot. What a shot. 
keeper. Well, that's well played too. He's driven that beautifully through the offside field. So controlled for four. Matthew Hayden is playing a gem of an innings. He really is. Edged and dropped. The opportunity was there. Rahul Dravid was the fielder. That ball was flying to his left. And he can't believe it. Matthew Hayden just losing his concentration slightly from the over previously. Quite far away from his body. And that should have been held at this level of the game. Loves to cut and he's done it successfully. Not enough consistency from Benkitesh Prasad. This one he's got properly. He's mistimed a couple of attempted uh, drives. This time he's got it well and truly off the middle. Hayden on 82 and going really well. 14 fours and a six so far. And down the wicket he goes again. Over the top he goes again. Such confidence. Is it going to go all the way? I think uh, probably uh, over the top. Yes, it's made it. Down the wicket he goes. Way down the ground he goes. It's a sailing up into the crowd. It's a big hit again. It's a biggie, all right. Matthew Hayden, every now and again, just decides to go down the wicket and takes him out of the ground. A tough second session for the Indians in 33 degree heat. This is a pretty hard place to play test match cricket when the temperature is in the 30s. Matthew Hayden, three sixes, Justin Langer over the pickets once as well. And then Hayden, robbed of his century, out for 97 just after the break. Matthew Hayden, ever since Harbhajan Singh was introduced into the attack, has looked to play aggressively against the off-spinners, looked to sweep him against the spin as well. Not consistently though. But he's managed to keep the pressure on the young off-spinner. Even in his 90s, looking to play attacking cricket against the spinner. And in the air. And got him. Can you believe that? First over after afternoon tea. And Matthew Hayden, who has hit three sixes in his innings, he put it straight down the throat. And he can't believe it. He had a century stare him in the face. And what a start for India. First over after tea. And the man who is charging on his way to his second consecutive test century is out. Well, that's the flip side of playing attacking cricket. We were just talking about how aggressive he looked against Harbhajan Singh. Heyman Badani is the fielder in the deep. Takes a good catch. But I think he'll be very disappointed with the shot that he attempted after the break. 97 for Matthew Hayden. 193 for two. Cut shot and in the air. And gone past the outstretched hand. A lot of oohs and ahs from the slips, Billsman. About four more runs. Takes Justin Langer to 49. Loves to hook the ball. Dropped. Dropped at square leg. Outstretched arm. So consecutive del deliveries. One just past Gully. And Tendulkar just couldn't quite hold on to it at square leg. He had it for a while, not long enough. It's good thinking by Zahir Khan. Didn't expect a short one, Justin Langer. It's the second time he's missed against Zahir Khan. Didn't get the middle of the bat, so hardly any power behind the shot came on to him again a little too quickly good attempt by Tendulkar and that's the 50 for Langer had a chance in the over but at the end of the over he brings up 50 to the applause of his teammates and got some problems with his pads 199 for 2 and Justin Langer played quite aggressively for his 58 did a swing and needs a field and has he got the edge? He's walked. So he saw a bit of swing the other way to Mark War. He dug it out for three runs. And in the classic dismissal for a left arm bowler to a left handed batsman, a little bit of outswing, not quite to the pitch. Followed through with the bat and just the edge for the keeper.
It's again the golden line just outside the off stump. This time the inner edge, the batsman walked, making it easier for the umpire. Not easy to spot those snakes in a crowded stadium like Eden Gardens. Justin Langer walks, and 58, and 214 for three, the Australians. Harpajan Singh, he'll continue. This is a good contest between he and uh, Mark Waugh. Mark Waugh looking to come down the track to the off spinner. That's a fine shot. Excellent footwork. He's picked the length up quickly and found the gap. That's a lovely piece of bowling. They go up. The finger has gone up too. This is a good spell from Harbhajan Singh. The line was good. He's got the outside edge. And this is turning out to be a good session for India. They picked up their third wicket after tea. Oh, big appeal. Yes, got him. RWW. Ricky Ponting. RWW. Habashan Singh. He's making a big comeback here. Ricky Ponting was playing all around that one. The bat didn't come through straight. And I think Habashan may have just given a little bit of speed. Just watch this. To see if it was out plum. I think it probably was. Watch him go back here. Yes, it hits you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Ricky Ponting. I think he probably knew. Adam Gilchrist is at the crease. The whole of Eden Gardens knows he's there, except those ten blokes there who are still celebrating, but uh, everyone else knows the danger that is Gilchrist. I think it's probably fair to say he's one of the most entertaining batsmen, if not the most entertaining batsman in world cricket today. If he gets going, he's dynamite. He's on strike now. Australia have gone from a wonderful position. This is Ponting's dismissal. Out LBW to Habashan saying absolutely plum. I'm not too sure that uh, Adam Gilchrist was that plum. But the umpire took a little bit longer. Let's have a look at it now. In comes Habashan. It pitches. Does it pitch on middle and leg? Oh, he hit it. Did he hit it? We'll need to see that from another angle. Well, all the Indians here are interested in is that he's gone. Pretty hard for an Austin to get a man out, LBW, but it certainly would have hit the stumps. It's whether it hit the pad first in the bat or a little inside edge. It just came back. It didn't go across the stumps. Pitched on line. Just held its line. And did he jam it into the pads? Now then, imagine the roar if they get Shane Warne out. And what's more, it'll be a hat-trick. Can Habajan Zing, who now has four for 58, take a hat-trick here? There's a silly point in position. There's a forward short leg in position. There's a leg gully there too. There's a slip. No Indian bowler has ever taken a test hat-trick. Here we go. Can he do it? on is he the first ever he wants a replay he wants a replay well is this history being made here Shane Warne hasn't moved an inch Steve War still shaking his head well they look cool they look calm but I've got to tell you the Indians are celebrating well I tell you what 80,000 people have given him out and the umpire was unsure. He gave Ponting out very quickly. He thought for a millisecond to give out Gilchrist. And on the third one, he's gone for the replay. And Warm, was it a full toss? Well, he can't see where the ball bounced first. Very good catch. Now, did it go into the ground? Or was it a full toss onto the bat, into the hand? Well, we need another We need another angle. The catch is clean, no doubt about that. We need another angle. We don't, we don't need the line. Yeah, he's, got, he's given him! He's given him! He's given him! He's given him! Well, I've got to say, I don't understand how he gives him on that one. That's a mystery to me. I want to see another angle on that. I think the third umpire's jumped the gun. Mind you, <laughs> it's worth seeing the reaction. 
Let's have a look. This will show us. Does it hit the bat and then go straight up? Always at the bump ball. Now, yeah, this will tell us for sure. Yes, she goes. Well, it's out. No, I think it's gone down. However, it's out of picture. We'll need, we need another one. This will tell us. Well, I'm unsure as how the third umpire made the decision without seeing this replay. And he looked there that it didn't come flush off the bat. What a fabulous catch, though. And the fielder knew that it was caught cleanly. Harvey this thing went straight up. And did he jam it into the ground or did it come flush off the bat? Well, I, I've replay. got it out, Duxy. I reckon I've got it out, boy, but don't let's overlook the catch. That was the most unbelievable catch that one could ever see off the face of the bat. I saw Reki Saka take some good catches. That's as good as I've ever seen. I think that he just got it. Let's see this now really slowly. Just watch this. Just, I think, off, just before it hit the ground. Up she goes. Well, even that one, it's, uh, it's very close to the ground. But watch the catch. Just watch this. Stays down. Goes to his right. Absolutely unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Well, the first Indian ever to take a hat-trick in Test Match Cricket. He now has five for 58. And at one stage, we thought that he'd be lucky to get back on in this innings. Habajan Singh, take a bow. Big South this time, and he's got his man. Kaspovic is gone. That front foot was a long way across. The Australian captain, as he has done so often, finally negotiated the rest of the day with Jason Gillespie. It was a tough few minutes for the Australians, but they got through. At one stage, Australia lost 6 for 55, and at stumps on the first day, finished that 8 for 291. A good performance by the Australians, but all their batsmen got a start, and yet nobody went on to make a hundred. Maybe Steve Waugh, with the help of Gillespie and McGrath, can change that tomorrow. For India, well, the star of the show was Harbhajan Singh. 24 overs, six maidens, five for 66, including a hat trick, the first ever hat trick by an Indian bowler in Test match cricket. What a day to remember for Harbhajan Singh. And after the first day's play, I caught up with a man who finished just three runs shy of his third Test century, Matthew Hayden. Matthew, I guess it's one of those congratulations, commiserations. Yeah, it was obviously really disappointing, um, you know, having sort of hit the ball well most of the day. Um, 97, I guess you would have taken it at the start of the day, but obviously, you know, everyone wants to score 100, um, and it was just a bit disappointing. You looked a lot more comfortable today than last week, and I guess the nature of the, the, the situation of the game dictated that to some extent. But did you feel more comfortable today as the game wore on? Yeah, I think, um, like you say, it was probably a bit more of the situation of the game. I think um, last game I was pretty keen to sort of let loose, but it was obviously Gillies was, was doing all that work. Um, so I just trying to have to pull it back a little bit. Today I felt pretty good from the start. Um, it's a very good wicket, great batting track, in really good conditions as well. So you know, I have to say it's probably one of the best um, grounds that I've ever played at, really. What were you thinking about at tea time? 97 not out. Did, on reflection now, was there a chance just before tea you could have brought the 100 up? Uh, I wasn't really thinking, I don't know if you're aware, but I never look at the scoreboard, so um, when I get 100 or whatever, um, I'm never really looking at the score, it's sort of more my concern is time at the crease, so I think at the tea break though and lunch breaks, I always look to see where we're at, the side's at, where I'm at personally, so obviously 97, <laughs> you know you're on it, and you know with the quick conditions that you're perhaps a boundary away from it as well, so probably just left my process a little bit and try to maybe even bring it up in one hit. You used your feet so well before tea, that four hours before tea. Were you just a fraction, not so much lazy, but a fraction short in your footwork in that dismissal? Yeah, I think, um, you know, obviously I, I, my objective today was, considering the ball wasn't turning, was to use my feet and try and hit pretty straight. Um, that ball was tossed up and I, I basically sort of read it on its length um, and tried to hit through the line, really. So I was a bit lazy, definitely. Well, the last session, the Indians uh, dragged themselves back into the game, so Australia's got a real contest on their hands. Sure, I think, um, you know, obviously we're a little bit disappointed with the last session, but, you know, runs are on the board now. I think, you know, it's, it's a test match, the game's on, um, 300 on the first day, you know, so we've got a lot to look forward to, and, and we're still not out yet either. I think, you know, some of the performances of Dizzy Gillespie in the tour games as well, he's 
batting really well, so if he can hang in there with Tugger, I think you know, anything's possible, but I think we've got a good total ahead. Good luck tomorrow, Matthew. Thanks, Hooksy. Thanks, mate. A delighted, but no doubt somewhat disappointed at Matthew Hayden, falling just three runs short on what would have been his third test century, but not to be, but no doubt he'll be pleased when he puts his head on his pillow. So, today too, and Australia, with just Steve Waugh, Jason Gillespie and Glenn McGrath to come, needs to spend some time in the middle, put some pressure on the Indians, and to try and score some runs as well. The action, Steve Waugh facing Venkatesh Prasad, your commentators Ian Chappell and Sanjay Mandraker. Prasad starts with the bouncer. Well, that's unusual for Venkatesh Prasad to start off with a bouncer. Not a bad one at that. And the other thing that's unusual there, Steve Waugh was really charging onto the front foot and normally we see him uh, preferring to play off the back foot, particularly early in his innings. That was a quicker bouncer. And that's even more unusual. But a good start. Put some doubt in the batsman's mind. Looking to get onto the front foot was Steve Waugh, but the second one, we get to see her not really very keen to get onto the front foot and it's a good thing he didn't do that good bounce for Venkatesh Prasad well there's no bat pad and man is out deep and he's uh, he's out there to save the single but they could have had Steve War out with a bat pad four runs Saurav Ganguly, the prince of uh, what is now called Kolkata, has got the ball in his hand and I've just got a sneaky feeling he's going to wrap this up. He bowled pretty well um, when he came into the attack in the first innings. Uh, for a while there, um, he looked the best of the bowlers. So here he goes. The captain has taken the ball. There's a big roar in this ground. Whacked away on the onside. Good shot by Stephen Waugh. That was taken uh, off leg stump and it brings up his half century. Stephen Waugh has just registered half century number 43. He continues to cause trouble wherever he goes. A superb cricketer. Lovely shot. And the Gillespie's hit it for four. Pierced the gap on the offside. Again, a lot of bottom hand in that cover drive. But what an effective shot. down the leg side he tried to uh, he tried to bowl that one uh, just a little quicker quicker well that's a record a record Australia versus India for the ninth wicket this partnership now worth 95 now interesting shot well I think it ended up being a little late cut I'm not too sure that uh, that what, uh, was intended I'm not too sure that he wasn't trying to take the bat out of the way Worked out perfectly, just a little tap on the head as it went past, but uh, he may well, Steve Waugh may well have been trying to get the bat out of the way. Although, looking at it there, it looks, uh, looks like a pretty decent sort of late cut. It's a beautiful day here in Kolkata. Uh, it's uh, blue sky day. Oh, four runs again. Pitched up and smashed down the ground for four. Well, this, uh, this Indian attack at the moment is looking very ordinary. Well, that's well played. He's got it through the gap on the onside. That's his highest test score. Oh, and it's gone for four. Another boundary to Jason Gillespie. That's eight fours uh, in the innings of 44. His best in test match cricket and a half century in test matches looms as well. He's got it away, no trouble at all. Down to the boundary it goes. Beautiful timing. The ball wide outside off stump. That really was. 
a lovely shot he's uh, a magnificent cutter and uh, sometimes uh, he doesn't actually play the classic cut he, he plays it standing up on the back foot rather like this beautiful shot a bit more straight of the bat than the square cut but using the pace of the bowler and bit of a strong push downwards to get the timing yes no yes god all over that long last they'll all be saying a little inside edge and that really was a lollipop catch the end of a superb performance jason gillespie has scored his highest score in test match cricket and what's more he's given his captain superb support he's getting that spin and bounce after lunch harbhajan singh just too good on that occasion. The line was good. He had to play at it. And he got the ball to jump that just a wee bit. 46 for Gillespie, 402 for 9. So Gillespie out for 46. His highest test score, surpassing his previous best of 41 in Candy against Sri Lanka. A match more memorable for Jason Gillespie's broken leg. It was a record ninth wicket partnership for Australia against India. 133 runs passing Ian Healy and Gavin Robertson in Chennai in 1998. Steve Waugh, the Australian captain, had not made a test century in India. He was pretty keen to do it in Calcutta at Eden Gardens. And surprisingly, he found an ally, and it was Glenn McGrath. The crowd here at Eden Gardens has come alive. Glenn McGrath, Australia's number 11, has arrived at the crease. His captain down the other end is on 93. And he'll want a century, you better believe it. McGrath, a batting average that uh, is nothing to write home about. Around about six, he's on strike. Can they get him first ball? Oh, a sweep shot. That hits him on the pad. He wants one. Well, that was um, that is a little unorthodox for Glenn McGrath. And he goes for the big one here, Steve Wall. And he's middled it. That sailed into the crowd. He's moved on to 99. If you say that this has been an innings of great character, it'll be stating the obvious. Just take a look at this hit. He's on 93. There's a deep mid wicket, a deep square leg. Not only has he middled it, but he's also found the gap. Even if it did land inside, he would still have got four for it. Yes, Arun, he's a master at taking calculated risks. Big shot to play in the 90s. And now takes the single. 100 for Steve Wall. Up goes the hands, he punches the air. It's an outstanding performance by the Australian captain. 2500 in Test Match Cricket. And he really has that uncanny knack of coming good just when he's got his back to the wall. Such situations really bring out the best in him and the entire stadium is giving him a standing ovation and he deserves it very knowledgeable crowd very discerning they know that this man in the past has done it for australia and once again just when he needed to stem the rot he did just that what an innings of character lovely shot off his legs Should get three comfortably. And Steve Waugh here continues to pile on the agony as far as the Indians are concerned. Get it! Pass mid off. Another boundary. This is always a tough time for the openers. They just have ten minutes in between to change and get their focus back on. That's a fine shot. That's a neat leg glance to end the over. 431 for 9. Ah, yeah! And the finger has gone up here. Steve Waugh has been a judge leg before. The Australian innings has come to an end. We'll have to take another look at it. What you got to see was where he was struck. Was he struck in line or just outside? It was the quicker delivery from Harbhajan. And the long 
long wait for the Indians is over. Australia finally bowled out for 445. The star for India, Harbhajan Singh, with seven wickets. That's the faster delivery, wanting the runs. Struck in line, but would it have actually gone on to hit the leg stump? And Bayerfeld, yes. And Steve Waugh was a judge LBW. That was a close decision. Went in the favour of the bowler. And he has seven. India have quite a task now, chasing that 445. Steve Waugh. Out LBW for 110, his 25th test century, of which 23 have been scored in the first innings. Glen McGrath said to me, a little passing comment as he walked off at the end of the day's play, that he didn't know how the Indian bowlers were going to get him out, and he finished on 21 not out. He added 43 for the final wicket with Steve Waugh, and Australia, in fact, added 154 in just one and a half sessions on day two. For India, the bowling card, and doesn't that look pretty impressive for Hubbarding Singh? The youngster, 7 for 123, including a hat-trick. Zahir Khan bowled pretty well for most of his 28.4 overs, and he took a couple of wickets. So India, 24 hours ago, thought they were in the game. Suddenly, now trying to save this cricket match. Let's go to the opening ball. Glenn McGrath bowling to SS Das. So much of the uh, Australian attack is based on Glenn McGrath getting an early wicket. So often he does it for Australia. And that uh, should be India's uh, target, to see off Glenn McGrath, make sure that he doesn't get an early wicket. Also, you don't want to concentrate so much on McGrath that you lose wickets at the other end. Caught at second slip. A comfortable catch there for Ricky Ponting. And it's Jason Gillespie on this occasion that's got the early breakthrough. Well, not what India wanted. They were desperate to get through the 50 minutes. He reached for the delivery before, hitting a square to cover point. And on this occasion, Gillespie got it just right. Back foot going towards the middle of the leg stump, not towards the off stump. An easy catch for Ponding at second step. Rahul Dravid would have just had time to uh, get the gear on after the quick change of innings, and then he's suddenly out in the middle. Facing Jason Gillespie. That's a good positive start for Rahul Dravid. After such a tremendous session last night, India really have uh, let the game slip. And they need something, they need a few positive things to happen. That's a good shot from Das. he's off the mark with a boundary. Much the same as the way the Australian innings started, except they didn't lose a wicket. That's better. And nicely played. That's a lovely cover drive. The little fellow with a big heart. Das onto the front foot. Inside edge. And did he catch it? That is a beauty. Inside edge. I think Gilchrist was initially going mentally to stop the ball. And again, SS Das has made one mistake and he's gone. And that is one of the great catches. What a fabulous catch by Adam Gilchrist to dismiss SS Das, the youngster out again and suddenly India, not surprisingly, two wickets down with not too many runs on the board and that brought Sachin Tendulkar to the crease. The roar was deafening when he came out from the change rooms and Tendulkar yet to score a test century in Calcutta was absolutely desperate to do so. His high score, 79 against Australia in 1998 and India needed every bit of Tendulkar's skill and experience to get themselves back into this match. In swing out, good delivery, picked away very nicely. He looked for two, well run Tendulkar. Good delivery first up, a little bit of late in swing by McGrath. But Tendulkar's off the mark. But these are the two champs at each other. Warren attempted to bind around his legs. And Tendulkar is a wonderful sweeper. McGrath is quite swear. He loved to sweep reasonably fine, does Tendulkar, and on that occasion, he did it perfectly. He concentrates so much on the impact when playing the sweep. Doesn't worry too much about the length, but watches the ball like a hawk. And he wants to meet the ball more than anything else. So McGrath's been bowling in-swingers to Tendulkar. 
And that's it again. Big shout. He's given him. Now the in swinger. Very much like his first delivery that he bowled to Tendulkar. On this occasion, though, Tendulkar has missed it. And he has been caught right in front. And there is a deathly silence around this ground. I just get the feeling Sachin Tendulkar seems to be developing a mental block against Glenn McGrath. This was plumb in front. Glenn McGrath bowled just four deliveries to Sachin Tendulkar. Each one was an in-swinger. And finally, he got his man so confident was McGrath that he didn't even turn around to see the umpire put his finger up for an LBW decision. Tendulkar's dismissal brought the captain to the crease. Hometown boy, sort of Ganguly. He was under pressure before this match and he needed some runs to get India back into the game. Warren versus Ganguly. This should be a good contest. That's a fine shot. He's hammered that through the offside for his first boundary. Well, that's where Ganguly loves to play, through the offside. A bit of width on that occasion from Shane Warren. I think he was throwing it out there to uh, tempt the batsman. Tempt him, he did. But uh, Ganguly is very good through the offside when he's in form. That's well played at the end. He's used the pace of one. And he'll pick up the second boundary of the over. Oh, that's got to be glow. I think there were two noises there. Was it just pad? Oh, well. Now, I think the bat must have hit the pad. There were definitely two noises. It wasn't a really convincing appeal, was it? Certainly an appeal, though. Good bowling. Oh, he's bowled him. He's bowled him. Shane Warne has struck. Well, he's got him again, and I've got to tell you, the driver there just lost his concentration. That's the seventh time he's got him out. He really did look to play across the line there. He knows he should have been playing it back straight down the pitch. Warren sucked him in. That is the end of driver. Now then, Laxman's there. Oh, and a big appeal for LBW, and uh, not out, says the umpire, and a little indication that it was uh, turning too much, I think. It's taken now. It's a matter of whether it's yes, given out by uh, umpire Willie. Terrific uh, catch there in the gully. So Michael Kaspovich, by uh, concentrating on that line around about off stump, has got rid of the Indian captain. A great catch by the Australian captain Steve Waugh to dismiss his opposite number. But again, sort of Ganguly failed his team when India needed him most. India still 156 runs away from avoiding the follow-on. And that must have seemed like a thousand as Australia continued to pile on the pressure. 92 for five, India. Yeah! Oh, and a big shout there from Michael Kasovic, and he's got his second wicket. So he certainly uh, repaid the faith of the selectors in sending him on this tour, first of all, and then picking him in this test match. They've been bowling some good off-cutters. I think that's what Nan Mongia was shaping to play for in the end, playing inside the line. Play for that ball to come in. Slight nick. Well, Nan Mongia just marking his uh, guard there, trying to put the umpire off. That's a good shot by Habijan. Taken that second slip. Ricky Ponting gets another... Uh, Straightforward catch off the bowling of Jason Gillespie as Habajan Singh presents him with catching practice. Tell you what, Ian, I've seen batting collapses like this, but not in India. I've seen this happen outside India, but it's happening fairly regularly at home as well, and that I think is a major problem for Indian cricket. That's a fine shot. Hit with minimum of effort, but the timing was good. Four more. He's cleaned him up here, right through the gate. The leg stump has gone for a walk. And Zahir Khan on his way. Eight wickets down here for India. McGrath doing the trick once again for Australia. India chasing 445. 
at stumps on day two. Eight for 128. And Tendulka out for 10. That proved costly. Tenguli again failing. Laxman looked pretty good for his 26, but he hasn't got much to come. Just Prasad after one of Raju or Vivius Laxman are dismissed. For Australia, they bowled beautifully. Four bowlers used. Every bowler got a wicket, at least one. And Shane Warne made the comment tonight that he has yet to get an LBW in India. I wonder whether that will change on day three. At the end of day two, I caught up with a man who scored his 25th test century, the Australian captain, Steve Waugh. Steve, congratulations. Yeah, thanks, Hawksy. It was uh, a great day for Australian cricket. What were your thoughts this morning when you walked out the bat? Did you give yourself a chance to get through an entire session without being bowled out? Yeah, realistically we did. I mean, Dizzy's got a very good defence and we knew the wicket was pretty flat and once we got through the early overs we thought India might start to panic a bit to try and restrict us and we really were going in 10, lots of 10s, so 360, 370 and setting little benchmarks for us to try and achieve all the way through. Jason's really come along with his scoring. At one stage, five consecutive boundaries. Yeah, look, he, he's, he's, a, he's a good bat. I mean, he's got very good technique and when he lets himself go he can play some pretty good shots and yeah, you know, the, the plan was was difficult for me to score boundaries. So as soon as the field came up, then Jason had the opportunities to play his shots. What about those tactics, Steve? Without trying to get too much away from your side, it seemed unusual to give you the single all, all the time, knowing that your way of batting with the tail is to give the tail back the strike. Yeah, it's probably a bit unusual, I mean, and not many people, I guess, do it the way I do it. But I'd like to show faith in the, the you know the, the tail enders. They they spend as much time as us in the nets, and they've got ability. And once you give them confidence, they can play. But yeah, you're sort of caught in two minds what to do out there, and that sometimes happens. You're not very animated normally, Steve, on the cricket field, uh, but you showed a lot of animation when you got your century. Was it a combination of only being 20 when Jason Gillespie joined you last night, or was it just a Test match India 100? Yeah, a lot of different factors. I mean, I've got an affinity with Calcutta, with uh, you know the, the, the girls' project that I sort of support here, and uh, yeah, being 20 on out with the number 10 batsman coming in, and 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 you know we won the World Cup here in '87, so I've got some great memories here, and we we lost the last Test match here as well, so it's mixed emotions, but. Um, when you play in front of such a great crowd and a big crowd, you do get excited. What about that catch? I can imagine you was a little smarty pants at Bankstown pinching the next door neighbour's peach off the tree, and it was just like that today. What a what a beauty! Yeah, it sort of ballooned up, and it, um, I had plenty of time to see it, and I was pretty determined to take it. I knew it was going to be a big wicket, and the guys were just really fired up today. And we we talked about being in the zone. I think that the team was really in the zone with our fielding. There's some good catches, and I just didn't want to let the other guys down with a drop catch. And see, there's a wonderful period of Test match cricket when Ganguly and Adrava were there and you could just see the entire Australian team just work on just building up the pressure. Yeah, well, we had a bit of a talk of drinks and we could just feel that they were sort of on the, the precipice of going over and if we really pushed them, we felt we could take a lot of wickets in the last hour. So it was up to us to control ourselves and do our jobs and not, not get too far ahead. India on day three, 118 runs away from making Australia bat again, but just two first innings wickets in hand. They needed a good start, they didn't get it. Raju out LBW to Glenn McGrath, adding just one to his overnight score in the second over. And that just left Venkatesh Prasad with Vivius Laxman to give the faithful at Eden Gardens some hope. They'll get two here and get it easily if it doesn't get to the rope. In fact, it's beaten him to the rope. Lovely shot. Good shot. Hit that magnificently. Oh, and straight away. Straight away, uh, that one beats the edge, but no ball called. So it wouldn't have mattered, it mattered anyhow. Oh, he's played it through the offside. It's 50. Oh, it's a fantastic 50. And a fantastic shot to get in there. VVS Laxman is the one England batsman in this innings that has produced the goods. Born again. Down the wicket he goes, over the top of his head. Beautiful shot, one bounce into the boundary. Very nearly hits the cameraman down there. VVS Laxman has decided to take it to Australia this morning. And the right tactics, he's using his feet against Warren, getting into a good position inside out. Uh, he's hit the straight, but he can also play the shot over extra cover. That's out. Or was it on the arm? I think. Oh, he's given him. He's given him. I think it was on the arm. Well, he's been given by uh, umpire Willie. I don't think he'd be too happy with uh, the batsman there going for his arm. 
Laxman uh, indicating that the ball hit him on the arm. Shane Warne went round the wicket there. And uh, I think you'll see here the ball hits him on the arm. Look at him, he's still looking at his arm. <laughs> see, see if a mark has developed. Have a look. Yes, I think um, that's what's happened. An umpire, Willie there. I mean, it's within inches of the uh, of the glove. No one walks these days. And uh, have a look at uh, <laughs> umpire Willie out there now, along uh, with the batsman, saying perhaps it just nicked the top of the glove. That's what I thought. Devious Laxman batting at six could probably consider himself a little unlucky being dismissed. Court Hayden may be off the forearm off the bowling of Shane Warne for 59. But India capitulating in just 58.1 overs, all out for 171. Still 274 runs behind Australia. McGrath, 14 overs, 4 for 18. Dictated and dominated like he does so often. And two wickets apiece to Gillespie, Kashbowitz and Shane Warne. So the Australian captain had a choice and he decided to enforce the follow-on with those 274 runs up his sleeve. It was time for the Indian openers, who lasted just three balls in the first inning, to show some backbone. Let's go to the action. It's Glenn McGrath bowling the opening over to SS Das. So SS Das on strike. Unfortunate dismissal after looking pretty good in the first innings. An inside edge and brilliantly caught by Adam Gilchrist. So he will take strike. Two men on the leg side catching. Three slips and two gullies. Das had played particularly well for his 20 in the first innings. Ramesh was out for naught. So the youngster was left alone at the top of the order, so to speak. And hadn't put a foot wrong. Played nice and straight. Played forward, gone back. Watched the ball closely. And he has to do exactly that again here. And already McGrath right on target. Five slips in the gully for Gillespie. And the hands are warm. And that's gone over the top. Just a little bit too wide by Gillespie. And again. So the aggression continues from the Basson. Successive boundaries to complete the Gillespie over. Oh, that's uh, very, very close. Yes, he's got, he's got him. Now then, that is magnificent bowling. He's turned a few quite sharply, and I think that uh, what Warren was doing there was uh, trying to ensure the ball didn't turn quite so much. So a little bit more overspin in the delivery. Have a look at this. Good catch as well. I think there was a bit of that wrong one in this one. He was working his magic on Estromesh. We'll get another look at it, whether it was the wrong one or the top spinner. But it's really got Ramesh done on that occasion. Excellent leg spinner's wicket. And a change in the batting order. The new batsman, VVS Laxman, striding out to the centre. Well, I've already seen him play some, um, some good shots. Smashed him around a fair bit uh, earlier today and uh, it'll be interesting to see how he goes about handling Warren here a little bit difficult uh, when you first come in oh good shot through the offside field this will go for four as well that's very fast this outfield that's a lovely shot Caress through the offside field. The Bengalis are loving it. Wrapped on the pads here, but just doing a little bit too much. Good decision. That's in the gap, and that will reach the boundary. The timing's good. So they may think about opening with uh, Dravid. In fact, he's uh, trodden on his stumps here, so there's a lot of shouting and yelling from the Australians. And uh, obviously the foot has clipped the stumps and the bail is down. Some may think that SS Das may have been unlucky, but perhaps he needs to go to the nets and maybe learn to bat outside the crease 
if he's going to be such a wonderful back foot player in the future. Treading on his stumps, always a sad way to get out. But that brought Sachin Tendulkar to the crease. At two for 97, at least he had some runs to play with. But India still 177 runs away from making Australia bat again. Tendulkar, as usual, started in confident and aggressive fashion. And Tendulkar off the mark for the boundary. through the field for four. In the air, and that's out, he's caught behind. Sachin Tendulkar is caught behind. That's very, very good bowling. The widest delivery, they know he's an aggressive player. He's gone after the wide ball, and it was a huge nick. What a lovely delivery that was from Gillespie. He's been absolutely fantastic with his line and length. Jason Gillespie did it. He got the wicket that Australia so desperately wanted, that of Sachin Tendulkar. Disappointment for Tendulkar, out for 10 in both innings, and he goes away from Calcutta with no test century to his name. His highest score still being the 79 he scored against Australia three years ago. It brought the Indian captain to the crease. And sort of Ganguly needed a turnaround in form. Criticism has been thrown at him from all quarters and he needed to stand up and be counted. So Ganguly with Laxman needed to engineer some sort of miracle to get India back into the game. That's well played. Just a little over pitched. Beautifully driven through the offside field in four. Lovely outfield players have really enjoyed playing on this ground and Lashman certainly enjoying it in the middle at the moment 59 in the first innings he made earlier today and now he is not out on 47 slow ball and he has picked it up beautifully that brings up his second half century in a day India forced to follow on Lashman the shining light this morning and he has held the torch again this afternoon. That's up in the air. And it will clear mid on quite comfortably. One bounce over the rope. Oh! That smash back. Nanguli has done well to get out of the way. That's pass one. That was hit straight and hard by Saurav Ganguly. Driven through the offside, full toss put away, consecutive boundaries for Ganguly. And he's gone, he's got a nick, and Glenn McGrath has got to under the skin of Ganguly before getting him out. India still 42 runs behind, even allowing for the 117-run partnership, which Glenn McGrath broke, denying sort of Ganguly his first half-century of the series. But Ganguly's wicket didn't stop young VVS Laxman in pursuit of his second test century against Australia. His first was in Sydney, and can he do it at Eden Gardens in Calcutta? This time he pulls and into the gap. Just needs one more run for a well-deserved century. There's the 100, Laxman's second test 100. This change of angle ball wide of the crease there from McGrath. So the day ends with India on 254 for four. They trail by just 20 runs. And uh, the hero of today, BVS Lakshman. Australia bowled India out in 58.1 overs in the first innings and up to 75 overs in the second. India, 254 for four. Just 20 runs behind the Australians. And BVS Lakshman, a magnificent century. 
batted at six in the first innings and asked to bat at number three in the second. Ganguly played very well for his 48 and now it's out to Dravid to help out VVS Axman on day four. Australia used five bowlers. Glenn McGrath, one for 43. Gillespie bowled well again, two for 62, although he copped a bit of stick from Ramesh. Shane Warne, one for 87. An absorbing battle with VVS Laxman, Mark Waugh and Kasperitz bowled as well for Australia. But India still 20 runs away from making Australia bat in its second innings. And at the end of day three, I caught up with the man of the moment, VVS Laxman, his second test century against Australia. Your second hundred against Australia, Sydney and now here, which one was more special? Uh, well, this, this is more special, but even the Sydney one was special because that was my first test hundred and I always dreamt scoring in Australia. But this, uh, because of the position we were in, it was very important that someone had to stay and get a big score. So this is also very special to me and I hope I continue tomorrow. What was your mentality this morning in the first innings? You scored 59. Did you have an approach to your batting when you came to the ground on 26 not out? Yeah, definitely to take as much strike as possible and uh, play freely, you know, because uh, I wanted just to add as many runs as possible because, and the way we were going, I thought we could have avoided the follow-on. A little bit unfortunate. Uh, when did Saurav Ganguly tell you that you were batting number three in the second innings? Well, as soon as uh, I came back after uh, getting out in the first innings, the, the coach and the uh, captain told me that I'm batting number three and I'm really glad and I really thank them for giving me this opportunity. Well, you made the 100 in Sydney as an opener, now at number three. Where would you like to play? Well, I always played as a middle order batsman. I mean, I was never uh, an opener, but when the selectors asked me to open, I took it as, as a challenge, you know. But now, uh, since I've been dropped after the South Africa test last uh, March, I've decided to bat in the middle order. It's been going well uh, in the first class cricket as well. I've been getting runs in the middle order, and I love this spot, number three spot. Well, it was a great battle between you and Shane Warne as well. A man in good form, good bowling form. You've used your feet. And you played particularly well through the onside. Yeah, obviously he's a great uh, bowler and it's a great challenge playing him. Today, I mean, it was my day and I was just timing the ball well. I just wanted to play according to merit of the ball and it just paid off. And what are your plans for tomorrow? Uh, settle down initially and take out the new ball because that's very important. That spell is very important. And uh, eventually get a lead of, say, 200 to 25 and that will be a lot of pressure on the Australians in the fourth innings. Again, congratulations. It was a wonderful innings. Thanks a lot. A pretty happy VVS Laxman, his second test century against Australia. And the most impressive part about that was that he said that he has to do the same on day four as he did on day three. Well, India will need both Laxman and Dravid to first of all get rid of the 20-run deficit and then get as many runs as they can to at least give India some sort of competitive target to set Australia. Well, they did just that, scoring 122 runs in the first session. At one stage, 75 runs coming from just 11 Australian overs. Raul Dravid passed his first 50 of the series and Laxman went past his previous highest score of 167 against Australia in Sydney. McGraw, and that's for just a little bit wide. Very nicely played. He's been waiting patiently. The cheers you can hear are because India are now, well, I suppose you could say in front. Australia have to bat again. Going off the inside edge again, that's four as well. Gillespie has bowled superbly. He's got one or two to just nip back a little bit. Well, that's a better shot. Down the ground for four. That's better. Rahul Dravid, when he plays in the V, sorry, it's Laxman. <laughs> I'm willing him on. Have a look at him. Last ball of the over. Well pitched up. Smashed through the offside again. That's a wonderful shot. Running away down towards the boundary. This will be four as well. This place has come alive. Laxman is starting to play some shots. You better stay with us. 293 for four. Ken McGraw continuing this little battle now. Oh, well played. Well played, Dravid coming to the party as well, right up on his toes, beautiful shot that was. Let's watch this delivery. Oh, through the gap again, through the gap again. VVS Laxman is having a ball. He was very cautious early on. He's uh, heading towards 150 now, playing beautifully. Laxman, one run away from 150. 
No man close in catching for Warren at this stage. And there it is. Well played by VVS Laxman. 59 in the first inning. Genuine applause by Shane Warren. And very good to see. Been a pretty big verbal battle out in the middle with all the players, but Shane Warren was the first of the Australians to clap. And what a score for Laxman. Drivers off century. That is well played. Drivers was under a little pressure when he came out to bat in this innings. He's had heaps of Shane Warne. Well played, Rahul. Good toss, straight down the ground, another four. Picks his spot, that's his highest test score. VVS Laxman is playing an absolute gem of an innings here. 122 in the session. Oh, that's close. That's got to be close. Oh, I've got to tell you. I want to see a replay of that. That little outswinger straightening down the line. Sure, he was forward, but that's what Ponting's got to do. He's got to get it straight down again. That looked like an outswinger that was going to hit middle stump. Oh, and again, a big appeal. Not out, says the umpire. Again, the ball swinging back. That is the end of the over. They've survived the session. And what a session it's been. India did not lose a wicket in the first session. In fact, Australia did not look like getting either Laxman or Dravid out in that two-hour period. Four for 376 at lunch, and any thoughts of Australia getting a day off on the fifth day was quickly evaporated with the batting of both Dravid and Laxman. I guess some bad memories for the Australian. Last time they played here, India made five for 633 in 1998. So after lunch, it all started again. Laxman went bang first ball. So Glenn McGrath to take it up. Off four. Straight through the offside field. First ball. What a way to start. And there's that swing arrow. Then it's four. Beautiful shot. Rahul Dravid. Going with the spin that the swing that time. Finding the gap superbly. Oh, and it's boss slip. Oh, this will frustrate McGrath. Well, that one bounced. Hit the gloves. A little bit of a mix-up. Oh, that was a chance of a run-out. Chance of a run-out there. There was a stutter and a direct hit. May well have made the difference. Beautifully timed. The partnership now worth 200. There's the double hundred for VVS Laxman. Oh, it's four as well. Boy, they are turning it on. Steve or trying to put some pressure now on Rahul Dravid getting his close infielders in. There they are, a shot leg, a silly point and a slip. He's got it through. That's a fantastic century. Rahul Dravid has made his first century against Australia. It's his ninth test match hundred. He's fourth in India. Great performance. Well, there's a short delivery and smashed away uh, down to the boundary for four. Well, if Matthew Aiden keeps bogging them there, I promise you, <laughs> we'll see a declaration sooner rather than later. At T on the fourth day, India had progressed to four for 491. They scored 115 in the second session and now, quite unbelievably, lead by 217 still with six second innings wickets in hand. The partnership between Laxman and Ganguly, 259. It's the highest fifth wicket partnership for India in Test cricket. And the next target for VVS Laxman, he's on 227, is the Sunny Gavaskar record of 236 not out, achieved against the West Indies in Chennai in 1983. So one shot of the highest score ever made by an Indian. The crowd know it.
So he's the joint highest now with Sunil Gavaskar. It's taken an Indian player 18 years to reach that score. 236 not out at the moment. So he becomes the highest scorer for India in a test match. 237 not out. 515 for four the score. Again, off the back foot, steering it away. The sweeper again into the action, and that brings up the uh, the partnership of 300. And this would frighten you if you're a batsman. This is Jason Gillespie running in as the eagle, just to try and get himself motivated. He's not a pretty sight, Jason, but he really has in an enormous effort for Australia today. Let's just focus for a second on Laxman. 2.49. He's on strike. Will he become the sixth to toss to score 2.50? He will. 250. VVS Laxman. He's going through these milestones. One by one. Drop it one short of 150. And he gets it. Shouts of catch it, and it just beats Matthew Hayden on this occasion. The placement is perfect, and the lead is 300. So maybe uh, on the evidence of history, it would be a good time to declare just the three scores over 200 to win in India. Finished with a single, and that has been been a remarkable day for India. No wickets falling in the whole day. They lead by 315, and VVS Laxman has played a blinder. 275 not out, and the Indian team coming out to uh, greet their batsmen. They know what a tremendous job they've done for the team there. Too tired, but very, very happy men. What a fabulous day's cricket. India getting themselves back into the game and now have a real chance of winning a match that seemed a long way away a couple of days ago. 589 for the loss of four wickets. No wickets to the Australian bowlers. And VVS Laxman, the highest ever test score by an Indian on 275 not out. Rahul Dravid, 155. And their partnership is now 357. And the lead for India is 315 with six wickets in hand. For the Australians... It looks like the batting card, not the bowling card. The number of names there on the left. They all had a go, but nobody could get a wicket today. It was a fantastic day for India. And at the end of the day's play, I tried to catch up with the two batsmen, but they were getting treatment. So Surav Ganguly, the Indian captain, spent some time with us. What a day. Yeah, they both batted outstanding. It's probably the best innings in Test cricket I've seen from Lakshman. <clears throat> against a side which got a very good attack, uh, an attack which is in form, and he batted superbly. That seems to me the most important part and impressive part, doesn't it? He's made it against of this generation the best attack in the world? Yeah, obviously an, an attack which is in good form and uh, both him and Rahul played superbly. What were your thoughts this morning when you came to the ground? Uh, what, what, were you, what were you hoping for? Probably uh, as a captain I was looking for a lead of about 200 because in the position we, we walked out of bat in the second inning 200, to get a lead of 200 was, was a fantastic effort. We got about 330 on the board so it looks, looks a different ball game tomorrow, a fifth day wicket. It's going to turn, the bounce is uneven so you never know what happens. Did you think at any stage this afternoon saw over the clearing on the fourth day? No, not really. It depended on the lead. Uh, we have, we've got about 3.30. We still need about a few more. And then we'll see how it goes tomorrow morning. What about today's play? The superstition, I would imagine, in the Indian rooms. Did you change seats? Did you move around? No, not really. It happens, I think. It happens to all caps and all the players. When the team's doing well, you, you tend to sit at one place. And, and the same has happened in the dressing room. What about the batting order? Your decision to uh, swap them around, Vivius Laxman and uh, Rahul? No, it's, it's, it's a decision of the team actually because Lakshman had a good knock in the first innings. He was there for quite some time and so we thought he had an idea of the wicket. He was there for some time. He knows, he knows what's going in so why not send him up? 
Well, sure, everybody here is thrilled with the way the two blokes played today. Good luck tomorrow. It should be a great day's play. Thanks, David. Thank you. India's aim on the morning of the fifth day is to get some quick runs and set Australia an improbable target. Around about four, four and a half runs per over, one would expect. Sadly for VVS Laxman, India's now highest test scorer, he was out adding just six runs to his overnight score. He was out for 281, out to the bowling of Glenn McGrath. And he's out. VVS Laxman is out, having been caught uh, in the deep gully position. And really the declaration should come now. It's pointless to wait any longer now that uh, VVS Laxman is out. Might be a good idea for me to rise in my seat as I speak. Seen a lot of great test innings. This one probably the latest. Everybody rising to their feet. 608 for 5 and VVS Lakshman at last dismissed on 281. Finally, after watching VVS Lakshman at the crease for 10 and a half hours, Australia got rid of him and they were pleased to see his back. A record partnership of 376 between Lakshman and Rahul Dravid finally came to an end. Well, for the next 40 minutes, a bit of suicide batting, as you would expect by the Indians, and they were able to post their highest ever score at Eden Gardens against Australia. Oh, he's had a go at that one, way over the top, it's in the air, will it be caught? Oh, it's dropped, it's dropped. That would have been a good catch, mind you. It was very high. And I thought Steve Ward did pretty well to get a hand on it. It would have been a fantastic catch. Running backwards, never easy. Especially with this massive crowd at the stadium, not easy to pick. In the end, he didn't even get his hands to it. It would have been a magnificent catch. Bowled him, clean bowl, stumps down. Going for the big hit down the ground. And uh, that's the end of... Uh, Mongia and so the uh, will they declare now well nothing absolutely nothing is leaving him out there Ganguly is uh, making this he's dragging this out now too long no answer to that he was bowling dead straight looking to hit across the line what happens sometimes is you're sending there's a problem here, definite run out, and now we'll have to watch Saurav Ganguly. Is he going to declare? Rahul Dravid has run out. A superb innings coming to an end. But it looks as if India will still carry on. They lead by 3-5-5. Both the overnight batsmen dismissed. And this is how Dravid went. Yes, well fielded and uh, nicely taken too by Kasprovitz. He was in a good position. Whoops, the bails off. And uh, that's unfortunate. The end of driver's innings, 180. Superb effort. Caught delivery over the top of the bowler's head. Four more. Keeper's head correction. Four more. <laughs> Hurrah! Well, he, he seems to be calling a minute. They don't want to come. <laughs> Perhaps he's saying uh, after the next ball, straight down the ground, dust the single, and surely now Ganguly's got to call him in. Yes, that's it. At last they've decided that they've had enough. Australia had been in the field since just before afternoon tea on the second day and just before lunch on the fifth day, India finally gave them some respite. 281 to Luxman, 180 to Rahul Dravid. Sachin Tendulkar being dismissed for the second time in the match for just 10. For Australia, they fought really hard, but at the end it was only three players who shared the wickets. Glenn McGrath with three wickets, 
Jason Gillespie, the pick of the bowlers, but he took two for 115 from his 31 overs. And Shane Warne, the figures of 34 overs, three maidens, one for 152. So, Sarah Ganguly and India set Australia 384 runs off a minimum of 75 overs. A tall order, but India, 1-0 down in the series, really needs to do something special if they're to grab 10 Australian wickets. Abhijan continuing 15 for none. Yes, he'll keep uh, sweeping away there. I really do think that Habijan should uh, seriously consider going around the wicket. Well, that's in the air. Dropped. Dropped. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, that's nicely played. Lovely shot from Slater. Beautiful drive down the ground. He hardly seemed to hit that one. That uh, really did come off the middle of the bat. There we go again. Exactly uh, where the middle should be. And another one that's four as well. Slater getting stuck in here. The crowd, I suppose, will be thinking, well, they've had a team talk at lunchtime and they're going for them. Slater down the wicket. Over the top he goes. Well, Slater is not going to allow himself to be dominated. This is the only way he knows. And, of course, that brings up the 50 partnership. In the air, and just daring it off. Yeah! Now that's close. The finger has gone up. Beautifully bowled there by Harbhajan Singh. That's taken the glove, I would reckon. Sharp turn and bounce. And Australia have lost their first wicket. And a very important wicket at that. That was a lot of bounce in that one. A lot of overspin. Bounce and turn and straight off the glove. Very easy opportunity for Ganguly. Not a difficult decision for Willie and Australia are down one. Slater has gone for 43. That's a big hit. That will go all the way for six. Positive footwork there from Langer. Well, that's a good shot. But it shouldn't worry Raju too much because the previous delivery is probably what prompted this he had a bat pad go straight down the wicket and then he didn't want to play forward to a ball out of the rough used his feet reached the pitch of the ball and got enough elevation to get those six runs and again the result the same this is a bigger one Excellent timing on that occasion. Consecutive sixes to end the over. An expensive one. 18 coming off it. It's up in the air. Taken. Sadak Open Ramesh takes the catch. Australia lose their second wicket. And they finally have that wicket on the sweep. So it's paid off, bowling from over the wicket. Trying to sweep, got his foot in the, his leg in the way, got the top edge. And a simple opportunity there for Ramesh. So Langer goes for 28. 116 for two, Australia. Mark War still to get off the mark. And troubled in the last over by Raju. It appears to me as though Raju is much happier bowling to the right-handers. Oh, that's got to be close, yes. That one skidded on. It was the top spinner. And that's a big wicket for India. Mark Waugh had a look at his stumps, but he just got shoved across them. And his feet slid it from under him once he got hit. So Mark Waugh, 22 in the first innings and fails to score in the second. It hits him in line at the back leg and then his feet just slip from under him and when he gets the chance to look at the stumps, his feet have moved but Mark hits him before that. He's dropped it.
bowl as many deliveries as possible to the Australian batsman. And that's Matthew Hayden's 50. Another good knock from Matthew Hayden. And an important one for Australia. Short and uh, watchfully played there by Steve Waugh. And uh, that's the end of uh, the very long, drawn-out Tendulkar over. So the score, 161 for three. Australia need 223 more runs to win this match. That is unlikely. At T on the fifth day, Australia is three for 161. So all thoughts of an Australian victory are gone. The test winning streak has come to an end. Matthew Hayden on 59 not out. That's his second half century of the match. And he really has been the form batsman of this Australian tour so far. Still a minimum of 23 overs to be bowled. Can India get the seven remaining wickets? Can Australia stave off an Indian victory? With the Australian captain at the crease, one would think it should be OK, but that is all about to change. In the air, and got him! He's out! So Steve Wall was dropped in the same spot for five, and he just tipped it around. It looked like it may have gone onto the thigh pad as well. A very good catch, and Steve Wall knows that that is the most important dismissal for India. It's not Saurav Ganguly at that position anymore. He dropped one before T and it's a good thing he's moved out of that position because Hemant Badani has done well. It's a sharpish catch. Oh. And again, has he hit it? He has! So the tentative sweep shot, he's got his second wicket in the over. And Ricky Ponting played it. Non-fluent sweep shot. And then he's paid the penalty of reaching for the ball and trying to paddle it around the corner. He's had some problems with the spinners in India. And this match has come alive. What a moment for this crowd. It was a near full house. Steve Waugh was the first man out in this over. Clipping it around. A substitute fieldsman. Good catch in both hands. And then ponding a couple of balls later. Batsman is looking out of sorts here. That's a poor shot. It was a tough time we mentioned. Spinning pitch. They give pardon six for pointing in the first innings. This man on a king pair. And it's a big shout and he's out. First ball, first innings, first ball, second innings. And Adam Gilchrist tried to sweep a ball that was nearly a full toss. Two wickets in the previous over. Gilchrist goes. LBW first ball for Norton in the first innings and Gilchrist goes LBW first ball in the second innings a very full delivery Would you believe it? Plum in front ball hitting in line and going on to hit middle stump he's disappointed but I think he should be disappointed not for the decision but for the shot that he played ah! Wrapped on the pad yeah the finger has gone up he didn't pick up the googly. That was beautifully bowled by Tendulkar. Three wickets in this spell. And Australia reeling now. 174 for eight. Well, he's the one man you would expect to pick a wrong one. Shane Warne. He's given him the wrong one. Warne not picking it at all. And absolutely plumb. That's a beautiful piece of bowling by uh, Tendulkar. Umpire Bansell has had to give three LBWs and he's got them all absolutely right. 174 for eight. That'll be four. Arbhajan Singh continuing. That's formally struck. That's a good shot. He went for the drive. The ball was fumbled, but it ended up being a magnificent catch. Right now they're within a, a wicket of victory. Habajan Singh takes five for the second time in the match. Twelve altogether in the match. Listen to the roar from the City of Joy. This is a fantastic catch because he's pushed at the ball. It hasn't come off the edge and it hasn't gone to bat 
from bat to pad. What a catch. And SS Das took a beauty. And Harbhajan Singh, seven in the first innings, five in the second. And now Australia have one wicket only. What a turnaround this series has taken. Annihilated in the first test. And here they are now, about to win the second. Well, that's well played through the offside field for four. Oh, and there was a little nick on that one. A little nick on that one. Or was it uh, just past the outside edge? Sachin's reaction would have suggest an edge. Well, they all reacted the same way and certainly got an edge there. Oh, good shot by McGraw. Right over the top of that one, smothered the spin, but played a lovely straight drive. <laughs> to slip. Gonguli, uh, was it Gonguli or was it Dravid? Dravid throwing it up in the air as if it was an absolute stole, stone cold uh, dismissal. And that's a minimum, of course, there might be nine. Oh, and that'll be close. Not out, says umpire Willie. That'll see his googly from around the wicket. Pretty close. Definitely pretty close. The first one flat and just outside off stump. They are gathering around him. He doesn't want to pop one in the end, the onside. Well, that's uh, padded away. Umpire Bunsal says not out. They may have hit Glenn McGrath's bat. There is no gully, surprisingly. There is only a man at backward point. Not sure what he's doing there. McGrath, the last few moments, been letting balls go. And no uh, went away from his bat. But there is no gully, although he didn't look at the uh, bat. Now the man has come into Gully, that's a better field. Oh, he's patted that. Oh, he's given him! He's given him! Umpire Bunsell's given him! That's the end of the test match. India have won. India have won in dramatic style. The whole of Bengal are on their feet. The series has been levelled. That is... Well, what a victory. The third team in 1,535 test matches to win a test after following on. And a significant victory too, because they have lost their most recent five consecutive test matches against Australia. What a test match we've seen here in Kolkata. Uh, worth every minute, Greggy. And hugs all around at Ganguly. The villain has become the hero. And McGrath extremely disappointed with the decision. But he and Cash Richard played really well. He's out for 12. And what a test match in front of huge crowds here in Calcutta. And the burning to celebrate the victory. And this crowd will not leave for a month. They will be dancing in the streets of the city tonight. They will celebrate across the whole of India. And everybody will be getting ready for Chen Hai. They win by 171. The series is one all. And just thinking it from an Australian point of view, this incredible run that they've had in Test Match Cricket has come to an end. A run that, uh, well, has broken all the records. It's been an incredible performance by them as well. The Aussie team out there congratulating the underdogs. Definitely the underdogs coming into this test match. And when looking at the figures of Habajan Singh, 7 for 123, 6 for 73, 13 wickets in the test match, the second best match figures in India-Australia test matches. And the crowd's still on their feet, and why wouldn't they be? Right around the ground. Lots of fires in the outer. The grandstand is alight. Looks like we're at a Duran Duran concert. And, well, aren't they happy? They are not fires of anything villainous. They are just 
fires of enjoyment and a way to celebrate this side that was 274 runs behind and they won by 171. Australia was set 384 off 75 overs but India taking seven wickets in the final session on the final day bowled themselves to victory. The test winning streak has come to an end. For Australia, Hayden, consecutive half centuries, 97 in the first innings. Adam Gilchrist, man of the match in the first test. LBW for Nort in both innings, both first ball ducks. And he was joined by Shane Warne in the pair department. For India, Harvajing Singh, seven wickets in the first innings, including India's first ever hat trick. And in the second innings, he took six wickets to get 13 wickets for the match. What a performance from the off spinner. 13 wickets for the match. At the end of the game, everybody was happy. The crowds were excited. The Indian players were jubilant, as you would expect. And let's go now to the presentation with Ravi Shastri. We've witnessed one of the best ever test matches ever played in the history of the game. A fantastic win for India. And it was only befitting that this magnificent ground, the Aden Gardens in Kolkata, was staging this game. India were down and buried, almost buried at the end of day two. Then the remarkable fight back has ensured that they've ended Australia's winning sequence and drawn level in the Pepsi Test Series. I'd first like to ask Steve Waugh to come up, please. On your left now. It's coming in now. Well, Steve, tough luck, but something you would have never expected. Well, it was a great comeback from India, and you do expect that in Test Match Cricket. They're playing for their country, and a fantastic win. We weren't quite good enough today and we've got to look at uh, look what we did wrong today and fight back in Chennai. Where do, you think, uh, where do you think things really started going wrong for you? Well, it was more so the way the Indians played, you know, it was fantastic batting, um, you know, batting that, um, as good as I've ever seen before. So we didn't do a lot wrong in the field, it was just full credit to the way the Indi Indian players played. The way your middle order has uh, collapsed on a couple of occasions must be worrying for you before the last test match. Yeah, look, we didn't fight that well today, I mean, we knew what we had to do to draw the game and we weren't quite good enough, so we've got to go back to the drawing board, have a look at uh, how we got out and try and rectify that in a couple of days' time. Now I'd like to ask the Indian captain, Saurav Ganguly, to come up, please. Well, Saurav, uh, greatest test match you've ever played in? Absolutely. I, I could never imagine we could win the test match after being followed on. It just shows how tough the guys are. It's fantastic to, be, to watch the boys play like this. What does this mean for Team India? Well, it's a, it's a big, big victory, you know, coming back from behind, down by 350 runs and then taking a lead by 370 and then getting them all out in a day's time. It's, it's, it's probably going to boost the morale of the side and it's been fantastic. Outstanding players in this game, VVS Lakshman, Harbhajan Singh, two young players uh, who've contributed. That should all go well for the future? Yeah, absolutely. Lakshman, Harbhajan and Rahul all, all, all contributed superbly. Sachin with the ball as well. Uh, it's been a good team effort. It's, it's the way we've come back has been fantastic. Many congratulations, Saurav. Fantastic performance. And before you go, if you can collect a cheque of rupees 5 lakhs from the president of the CAB, Mr. Jagmohan Dalmia. Now the award for the man of the match and the adjudicator is the gentleman to my right, the uh, match referee for this uh, series, Cammy Smith. Cammy, your choice and the reasons for it. Yes, a, a most uh, fascinating and absorbing test match. My choice for man of the match is VVS Luxman. VVS Luxman, man of the match. And he'll collect the Pepsi trophy. And also an award from Mr. Subhash Chakravarti, the Minister of Sport. Fantastic performance. You must be a tired man by the end of it all. Yeah, but it's uh, very satisfying that the team won at the end. Now, when you came back for this game, for the second test match, it's like a sort of comeback for you. What were your thoughts when you missed out in Bombay, when you went out to bat here, India were in trouble, you just played your natural game all the way? Yeah, that's because uh, I've come back to my middle order slot, so I feel more confident. And I just wanted to play according to merit of the ball, and because uh, the team cause was most important for me and I had to just hang on there and play a long innings, especially in the second innings. So I'm glad that my innings has helped the team to win the test match. A pretty amazed Indian captain as you would expect. And Vivius Laxman, perfect choice for man of the match. And Steve Waugh, well he understood how well India played to win this test match. Let's have a look at what happened over the last five days in Calcutta. Steve Waugh won the toss, 
He made 110. His third test century in his last four test matches. Matthew Hayden making 97. And for India, Harbhajan Singh, the young off spinner, 7 for 123, including India's first ever hat trick. India then bowled out for 171. Laxman with 59, batting at number 6. McGrath, the pick of the bowlers for Australia, 4 for 18. Then Steve Waugh said to sort of Ganguly, you can bat again. And they batted and batted and batted and made 7 for 657. Laxman making 281, the highest ever score by an Indian test player. And Rahul Dravid, who can't even get his name on that match summary, he made 180. Glenn McGrath, again the figures with 3 for 103, but Jason Gillespie was the best bowler. For Australia, they came out, the target was 384 of 75 overs, and they were bowled out with 6.3 overs to spare. Matthew Hayden, his second half century of the match, the first time in his test career. Harbhajan Singh followed up his seven wickets with six, 13 wickets in the match for the off spinner, and India won by 171 runs. Only the third time in 1,535 test matches has a side that's been asked to follow on one. Once this century, once last century, and once the century before. So, Australia's 16 test winning streak comes to an end, and the series is alive. It is one all. Australia won in Mumbai, India won here in Calcutta, and in Chennai, the third test begins with a series locked at one all. We hope you've enjoyed the coverage. We look forward to your company in Chennai.